Debbieites, we're back for the final episode of this series of Outlander recaps for the season finale of season five of Outlander. I'm Rob LaCouria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. I'm here once again with Uber fan Paul Sullivan LaCouria. Welcome back. Hi, nice to be back. Um, we're here to talk about Never My Love, the season finale, written by Matthew B. Roberts and Tony Graffia, and directed quite brilliantly by Jamie Payne. The synopsis is as follows. Claire struggles to survive brutal treatment from her captors as Jamie gathers a troop, sorry, a group or troop of loyal men to help him rescue his wife. Roger and Brianna's journey takes a surprising turn. Um, I think this episode deserves all the Emmys. It was beautifully done. I was really engaged with it. And I thought it was a fitting finale to a very strong season. Thoughts? I, <laughs> other than the fact that I'm disappointed that it's the season finale and we are entering Droughtlander once again, um, I think it was a brilliant episode. I, if she ever gets nominated, this is Katrina's episode. Um, yeah, I loved it. Um, I'm, I'm just insanely disappointed that it's the season finale. I just, because it ended on such a high, I want more. Yeah. Give me more. Yeah, so... I think we need to address the whole rape storyline because it okay. is an area that the show, it does, the, the show gets a lot of flack for this. And as exactly. to the books, because it just appears that we keep going back to this story, uh, like this. Um, uh. Yeah, and we just keep going back to sexual assault. Like, literally now, of the four main characters, three of them have been raped. It's only Roger now who has the <laughs> audacity to never have been raped. And it's something that we just have to address because some people really don't like it. I am not a fan of it as a, a way in which to move the plot forward, but you have some thoughts, which I think have some validity. Would you like to share them with our viewers? I do. Um... Look, in the book, which actually isn't in the, the, the this particular section of this episode, where actually this whole, in, whole entire episode does not appear in the book, The Fiery Cross. This particular section of the storyline actually happens in the next book, which is A Breath of Snow and Ashes. Um, so we've already, so for those Uber fans who are like stepping into the question of, um, are they going to only do half of the fire across this season? Because it is like we've mentioned, it's such a big book. Um, well, I think we can honestly say from now for next for season six, we are moving into a breath of snow and ashes. I just wanted to address that from the get go because that's all I have to say about that. So I think that's where we're going for season six. Um, in regards to the whole rape story arc, yeah, we do keep coming back to it, and as we were watching it. Yes, it was insanely uncomfortable. I think it was well done. Again, in the book, it was more graphic than what we saw. Um, but like I said to you, um, we keep coming back to it because for men in this time period, it's all about power. What is the one thing that they have over other people? in this time period is violence and rape and controlling everybody else. Because don't forget, we said in our last video that they blew up the sill. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so Jane could, and all the men could go running off to where the, whis where the, where the whiskey was being made, which left all the women folk vulnerable. According to that particular mindset, and so the Browns come in, Lionel Brown comes in, him and his men, and they beat up Marsley and, you know, and it's all about control. Jamie didn't want to become part of their committee of safety 
and they found out that Claire was Dr. Rawlings. So what is the one thing that they could do to Jamie and Claire to have them under their thumb? Rape, torture, kidnapping, blowing stuff up. Mm. It's all about <clears throat> power. Yeah, it was. Um, it certainly, though, does not uh, minimise how confronting those okay. things always are. And in this particular episode, I did feel at times that we were watching torture porn, but um, I went with it because I, you know, I, I knew that we were, we were being shown this to get to a certain point in the plot. And I really yeah. did enjoy, admittedly, when it became a bit more of a, better, a revenge scenario. I mean, Ooh, I've always been up good. for a good bit of revenge. Um, I loved watching young Ian paint his face and... And, like, shave um, his head. Yeah. Get, you know, get that scalpel. It goes back to um, when Jamie did his check of his hands and his feet on his birthday. And it's just... And it goes to the whole other point of Claire going through, I've got alcohol, I've got this, I've got that. When they're facing a, a big um, decision or a big event in their time, they do this checklist and that is what I was thinking of the whole time we were watching young Ian, you know, that was his ritual. And even when Jamie prayed and washed himself and cut his hand just before the um, Battle of Elements, it's, it's ritual, it's there, and, again, it's, um, a continuing thing that we keep coming back to with this particular season, which I think they've really hammered home, which is about oaths. Where do they, where is their oath? Where is their loyalty? Um, when it comes down to the crunch, are they going to stand by you? Can you trust them? Mm. And I think this episode really encapsulated all of that faith, family. Um, oaths. It was, it had so many themes throughout this particular episode. It's like you didn't know where to look. You're like, oh, there's one. Oh, there's another. There's another. It was, I thought it was brilliantly done. Um, I also really enjoyed, um, Sam Hewen's character, Jamie, saying, you know, kill them all. And I wondered what was going on with that future guy. Um, you know, he was kind of screwed no matter what he did. Because I felt what he did, I agreed with. Um, what was yeah. he supposed to do? Run off? Claire wanted them to run off immediately, but they would have both been killed straight away. So he thought, no, let's just wait till they fall asleep. But that was too late because Jamie and his loyal men had already turned up and basically killed them all. But he's escaped, and I hope we get to see more of him next season. That's a really fascinating turn of events for me. That really interests I think, me. I think in the book, again, for those who are watching, I'm sorry. Again, it's been years since I've, watched, I've read the book. So, and I don't have my own copy because I've, I had it on uh, my Kindle. So I will try and source my own book so I can go back and do some more research between now and the start of the season. But for <laughs> memory, if memory time. serves, <laughs> oh, no, I've got plenty of time. So um, from if memory serves me correctly, he does come back. Spoilers, I know. But... Obviously, he's going to come back because Claire promised him gems and he is desperate to get back to 1968. And I, I loved how it was done. And so, like, he's like, does Ringo Starr mean anything to you? And I just I thought it was beautifully done. I sort of wanted a little bit more payoff with him. But at the same time, I'm glad we didn't. And we did find out that he did escape which I'm quite happy about because he was the nicest one of the lot who kidnapped Claire. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, no, I, I knew it was coming. It was more like, actually, I knew it was coming, but I'd forgotten about it. So when it yeah. happened, I was like, oh, that's right. Ooh, oh, that's, good. that's cool. So, yeah. So, um, before we get to the main event of this episode, also I did, in, I had a feeling that Roger and Bree didn't travel and so that came true which dovetails into what we expect will happen next season with perhaps maybe when she has another child and we won't go into that spoiler but um yep. from what you mentioned that seems to follow what we're expecting next season but they're back 
yeah. back home, so to speak, and that was a nice touch. I thought that was beautiful. That really goes, again, it goes to family. Like they were thinking of home and like they just assumed home was, you know, 1968 or wherever they would have ended up in the future. I forget the time, I'm sorry. Um, but for them, home ended up being their family, Fraser's Ridge, which, again, is the whole point of this season, family. Um, it's not necessarily a place. It's where the people that you love live. And they could be anywhere, but their family, their home, wherever they are, as long as they're with their family, they're home. And I thought that was beautiful <laughs> because I was frustrated. I'm like, oh, my God, they're going through the stones. How can they do that? That doesn't happen in the book. It's really frustrated me. But to get them to actually end up coming back and they see young Ian, I was like, yeah, this is, this is kind of cool. So I like mm. that. So, yeah. Um. I think the highlight of the episode, ultimately, mm. is Katrina Balfe's performance. And mm -hmm. I've said this before and I'll say it again. And I'm not just saying this. I mean it. If this show was on HBO or, like, Netflix or something where it had and nothing against stars as a network, love it, no. all our peeps and stars. But if this was taken a bit more seriously by Academy members and it was more on the radar, like a lot of other shows happen to be, yeah. Katrina Balfe would have an Emmy on her mantle by now for the episode Faith, and she'd be nominated again this year for this episode. She gives us a performance that I have not seen by a female actor. I mean, all actors are equal, so I don't know about their gender, but looking at the yeah. best actress category, uh, I think she would be up there with Elizabeth Moss from The Handmaid's Tale and Olivia Ooh. Coleman from The Crown and that kind of calibre. She's brilliant. She lives yeah. and breathes um, Claire and yeah. she has to she's been she is put through the ringer. A lot of the a lot of the credit goes to director Jamie Payne, of course, but and the writing. But Katrina Balfe is the real deal and I feel really disappointed that she doesn't get the credit that she deserves. I I agree. Um, like, but I, I, I feel that passionately about the whole cast as well. But, again, I'm exceedingly biased. Um, but, you know, I you're right. If this show was on any other um, network, again, I love stars. But if it was on any other network, Sam Hewen would have the same as Katrina Bath if not an Emmy, at least a good chunk of nominations under his belt. Um, and, you know, I'm sure the rest of the cast would have also, uh, have nominations themselves um, because they do. They, they just work so well together. And uh, I just, yeah, they, I look, the more I think about this episode and each little element of it, I was like, Oh, yeah, I love it. And like, just talking about how great the cast work together mm. with when, um, so Katrina, and, and we haven't discussed this bit yet about how um, Claire's in and out of like, um, what's the word? A vision, for want of a better word. I, I'm, my mind's gone blank. It's Mother's Day. I've had a wine or two already. So, um, so she's there thinking about the future and, you know, being in the 60s and at home and then she's watching this battle happen and she gets told that all of her captors are dead or most of them are dead and, you know, Jamie goes, she will not take a life and then he's Jamie and Sam so stoic and, it, again, he does it all in his eyes. That man looks like he's about to cry but he holds it back and then you see... Um, he goes, I will take, I take lives for Claire. And then you've got young Ian, I will take um, lives. And then Fergus comes up. And then you've got Roger in the distance dealing with the fact that he's killed someone. A professor has killed someone. And I was just like, oh, that just, I just caught feels from that scene about family, oh, just family and oaths all over again. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um. So just to wrap up, I'm looking at all of the episodes okay. so far for Outlander and, and how they're rated by IMDb. It's a really good indication of what fans and critics thought of the episode. And 
Um, this season has a pretty good high rating. It's rated quite highly in comparison to others. And okay. um, the highest, apart from the finale, which but as we speak has not aired yet, so we don't know what that's going to get. But two episodes this season rated a 9.5 out of 10, which is quite wow. impressive. I think the only other episode that's ever rated higher was Dragonfly and Amber at a 9.6. So two, and, and then most seasons generally are in the eights and you might have a couple of 9.1s or 9.0s, but we've got two 9.5s, Journey Cake and The Ballad mm-hmm. of Roger Mack. And then we also had um, uh, Mercy Shall Follow Me at 9.0 and then every other episode's rated in the high eights. So a pretty strong season. People are suggesting Journey Cake and The Ballad of Roger Mack were the highest rated episodes. I would suggest... Better to Marry Than Burn was also a pretty good one, as was um, uh, Mercy Shall Follow Me, I've mentioned that, and Monsters and Heroes. So I thought this was a strong season. To me, this is the second strongest season of the whole show so far um, because, of course, season two is my favourite. Yeah, I'll I'll be curious to see what the finale rates and I'll be curious to see Mm. how well stars can do at the Emmys with their costumes and sets and so forth. I don't hold a lot of hope out for the cast, but... You know, you, you never know you're like in a big city. But anyway, no, I I it, was a, it was a pretty wonderful season. I'm very um, happy and satisfied with how it turned out. I'm pretty happy too. I mean, I could continue, you know, I could sit here and continue to talk about, you know, the, the minutia of this episode. You know, we could talk about how, you know, we had little cameos from Myrta and Jocasta um, mm. in, the, in her vision um i really liked this episode the more i think about it the more i really like it um it's hard for me to pin down which particular episode i like um you know but this this was up there i i feel Mm. i'd be intrigued to see what it comes out with imdb but i'm just like devastated that it's come to an end for another year um i'm gonna miss it um, I'm going to miss talking about it. Um, you know, there aren't that many people I get to talk to about how great this show is. So I would love to read any extra comments, questions that you might have. Um, but, you know, being in quarantine, I've, I've been a little bit preoccupied. So I'm sorry if I haven't gotten to anybody at the moment. So I will go and I will have a look and I will read some. But, yeah, I'm just devastated. Well, yeah, I, I really encourage you all to make comments if you can. And also, just as a heads up, in the next few weeks, um, I'm pretty sure I'll be uh, I'll have the pleasure of interviewing the main cast from the show, Katrina and Sam and, and uh, Richard and uh, Sophie. And if you have any questions at all that you'd like um, me to ask while I uh, speak to them, please also um, feel free to make that suggestion. I'll also be tweeting that um out uh, prior to just to see what the fans want to ask. I think the fans of this show are so special and so valued by the cast and crew of this show that um, given I've had the pleasure of interviewing them so many times before, I think this time it might be nice to get the fans to ask questions personally, which I will do. Anyway, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, everybody, stick with Gold Derby. We've got plenty more to come. We'll think of some great ways to bring Outlander back in the next few weeks uh, leading up to the Emmys and and further on when we can look forward to season six. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. It's been a real pleasure enjoying this show with you guys. And thank you so much for staying tuned with us.